DNA. Today I'm here to talk to you about DNA. And I want to establish you and to let you know how by studying DNA, actually one can understand the impact of errors, ambiguity, and learn lessons from nature about its importance for even life and for us to evolve and adapt as a society. I'm pretty sure that you've heard about DNA previously. Definitely it's not the first time that I'm talking that you are listening to this. In corporate world, you have a lot of times companies saying innovation is in our DNA, creativity is in our DNA. But I wonder, do you remember the first time where you've heard of DNA? Well, I do. I was 16 years old. By the time I had to make this huge decision, what do I want to do? Who do I want to be? And as any pre-college student that I was, I thought that this was the most decisive moment and the biggest decision that I had to make. And while in the process to go and look for the answer, I went for I went to a, an open week at the University of Lisbon, at the Faculty of Science, and there at the Department of Biochemistry. I had the opportunity to take a look at the three-dimensional representation of a DNA molecule. I even had to put those weird 19 3D glasses. And in front of me, there was this wonder double helix, which you probably may have seen, but not in a the 3D structure, just going in front of your eyes. And at the very same moment, I was being told DNA codes for life. Genetic code, it is universal. No errors are allowed. That is the rule. And actually, with errors, they are against life. So, no errors. And this is because no errors are alive. Because then life is not possible. I was amazed by that molecule. Could it be that there is a perfect molecule in life? Is this the perfect molecule that goes for life? And at that moment, I came to realize that understanding the chemistry of life was what I wanted to do, and becoming a scientist was what I wanted to be. And then, through all his life, after that time point, I've been embracing and studying uh, DNA in several aspects of life. But first of all, let us establish different levels. First of all, no errors allowed. Yes, it's true. To some extent, this is true because when cells have too many errors, or these errors are too impactful, then definitely that's against life. And life does not survive, nor evolves. But the second, the second layer, and as we all in life, we have to deal with errors. So does we cope with that in our genome, in our DNA. So some errors may occur in our genome, DNA can have some alterations which are pathogenic. And then this would cause what's called as genetic diseases. But actually, under today's knowledge, it almost makes no sense for some of these type of diseases to just be waiting until they appear. We can manage them if you do wide genetic screening. You can go and look if you have these mutations and then do a very predictive and preventive medical approach. And by acknowledging that errors may exist, and by knowing which errors do you have to deal with, actually you may increase your health care and have more empowerment on managing your health. But now, and this is 
what at this moment that passions me the most and it's kind of my purpose of life to democratize access to genetic tests. But now let's go seven years ago and let I will take you for the third level, a level for which I am absolutely passionate about, which is when errors actually can be beneficial. Just after finishing my graduation, I was given the opportunity to enter into a project where I would be studying the role of genetic errors and genetic code alterations. Remember, the rule is no alterations allowed. But I was studying them on a very peculiar organism, Candida albicans. Candida albicans causes candidiasis and it's very difficult for us to get rid of that. And there I was, studying this genetic alteration. And one day, I have just demonstrated that actually this, there is a mechanism for ambiguity. Actually, the old tool of one gene, one protein, as this is how actually genes encode for the different proteins, was not true on that organism. Because there was a mechanism in which by this promoting a big molecule there, whenever you have a coding unit, which is called codon, it could be decoded as two different amino acids. So actually that gene can have different forms and the cell has no idea of what is the form that has been expressed. And so, in the end of the day, what Candida has is a mechanism that leverages its genome. And from these 6,000 genes, actually can encode for over 2 billion different proteins. Imagine, imagine. this is huge. How can this, what does this mean in reality? This means that within one population, all of them with the very same genome, all cells will be different. And this is actually why it is so difficult for us to treat candidias, to get rid of candida albicans. Because our immune system, it produces antibodies against one cell, but not against all the others. And realizing that actually this ambiguous decoding system which shall not exist, and is against all the rules, all the life rules, actually it was giving a competitive advantage for survive in Candida albicans. And more interestingly, this has been kept throughout the evolution process. And from that moment on, I started to realize, to acknowledge that errors and ambiguity they can actually be a good thing. So there was this moment in my life when I started to embrace and accept errors and ambiguity as a natural thing, as a thing of nature, that I completely changed the way I see the world. And if one thinks when you go into the bus to business and to management, if you start to realize and understand how can you manage ambiguity, I am sure that you are pretty much more pre-adapted and will be the fittest to survive under this VUCA world. Remember, under this VUCA world, ambiguity is almost its dark side. No one knows how to deal with that. We are not trying to deal with ambiguity. But when you are at a moment when beauty is huge, please remember, it can give you a competitive advantage. Actually, ambiguity cannot be used or cannot be implemented in all units of an organization. Financial unit, ambiguity should be zero. No errors allow it. But when you go for other departments and other processes within your organizations, 
such as innovation, customer support, and even to some extent, extent production, probably sometimes, under very uncertain moments, as we are living today, under this COVID uncertainty, having the ability and the plasticity to test different things actually can give us a good adaptation model and can give us a competitive advantage. And who knows, by testing fast, we'll get this fittest. We will be the ones to survive. But again, to embrace that, one must acknowledge that you have to have a core. It has to be encoded in DNA, your DNA. For me, actually the real DNA of the company are their values. As a person, it's also my values. If my values are kept constant, then I will have the freedom to test, to be ambiguous, to error, and then to advance, to challenge the status quo and as such advance. And I am pretty much convinced that only with strong values, our ribbon DNA, then we'll be able to advance, challenge the status quo, advance and build a better society. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.